And we're back uh, with our first major conversation right here on The Breakfast. You're welcome. Nigeria's central bank over the weekend responded to insinuations that it didn't carry members of the cabinet and indeed the federal government along in its decision to redesign the nation's currency, the Naira. Uh, it insisted it followed the law and due process for the Naira redesign, uh, saying the exercise is 12 years overdue. Now, a statement by the Apex Bank uh, set the management of the Central Bank of Nigeria in line with provisions of Sections 2B, 18A and 19A and B uh, of the CBN Act of 2007 had duly sought and obtained the permission and approval of President Mahmoud Buhari in writing to redesign, reproduce, uh, release and circulate new series of 200 500 and 1,000 Naira bank notes. Uh, Central Bank, uh, in that statement, uh, further urged Nigerians to support the currency redesign project, which is in the overall interest of every citizen of the country. The hoarding of significant sums of you know, bank notes outside the vaults of uh, commercial banks uh, uh, should be discouraged, according to the Central Bank Nigeria's Apex Bank, uh, for anyone or by anyone who means well are for the country. Now, this comes uh, amid reaction and speculation over the move uh, to redesign the Naira following its unexpected announcement and also uh, following a statement by Finance Minister Madame Zainab Ahmed, uh, who in reply to uh, questions by members or from members of the Nigeria's National Assembly said she wasn't aware uh, of the move but heard about it in the media. Glad to say joining us this morning uh, to uh, throw some light on this and give us expert analysis uh, on this particular issue. Uh, we have um, an analyst uh, joining us. I'd like to say good morning and welcome to development economist Mukhtar Mohammed. Good morning to you Mukhtar Mohammed. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be on your program. Um, are you, are you, do you understand the, should I call it hula balu about, uh, you know, CBN and this new decision as far as Zainab Ahmed's statement uh, at the National Assembly last week goes? I think Zainab Ahmed, um, instead of responding, reacted. Uh, maybe that's what the challenge we have with this government. I think it seems to be a different wavelength. And don't seem to know what the law said. The CBN Act does not permit the CBN to meet with this with the central bank, um, with the minister for finance, to tell her that this is what we want to do. Um, the Act specified that the CBN is independent. Initially, the CBN was under the Ministry of Finance. Remember, during the time of President Olusegun Obasanjo, he came up with the Act. He wanted the CBN to be independent. That that is the global best part is any part of the world. So the CBN is independent to take decision when it comes to monetary policies. You don't have to depend on this on the on the um, Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Finance is supposed to coordinate physical policies with the federal government. Now, that does not mean that the CBN will not um, um, seek clarification. But in that act, it was made to the CBN that their clarification over certain issue must come through the, their audience with Mr. President. Um, you, you can remember the time um, when uh, Chukuma Soludu, Professor Chukuma Soludu was a governor of Central Bank when he came up with the re-denomination of the Naira. And uh, the then president, President um, Musa Yaradwa, Yadwa was, um, Umar Yadwa was not happy with it. And his only reason, even despite the CBN independent, was that even with the independence of the CBN, the CBN still have to brief the Mr. President about their decision, and Mr. President have to look at it and say, look, how does this work? How will it benefit the economy? That's why that decision was turned down. So the act permits them to do what they have done. They have not, like the CBN said, they went through all due processes, briefing Mr. President, and I think the President was satisfied with their briefing. I think it's in the place of the President to have called the Minister of Finance to brief the Minister of Finance if he really has um, any objection to it. So it shouldn't be put on the doorwell of the CBN. I think the presidency themselves, where they want to call the Minister of Finance, because the president is in charge of physical policy, is not in charge of monetary policy. So I, I think Zainab Ahmed need to look at the act very well and know that the CBN is independent. 
All right, so uh, I'd like to share your thoughts on the redesign and redistribution of the currency. What do you think about it? Looking at the timeline, you know, also juxtaposing that with all of the conspiracy theories that have been put out. Well, when you look at the timeline, there's no timeline. When you want to take a monetary policy, you have to take it at the time you think it's relevant. Sometimes you take it very fast, sometimes you take it very very slow, but it's always good to hit the nail on the nail on the head when it comes to taking monetary policy decision. Because the economy these days move at almost at the speed of light. Decision you took today could be relevant um, tomorrow. But when you look at the current decision by the CBN, it's not based uh, it, it's not strictly a monetary policy decision. I can say that it's more or less, you know, we'll be complaining about the CBN um, um, going into other areas. And I think this time the CBN have realized that they need to go into the security area because what we see is that um, the CBN takes a lot of decision monitoring while the physical side are not able to complement them. And the physical side are in, in charge of security. And once there's no security, then the economy will not flow those far, no matter the kind of uh, monetary decision that you have taken. So this policy for me is more of a security policy than a monetary policy. Now, in security policy in the short term, then a monetary policy in the long term. And in the short term, the monetary policy may suffer because of the decision they have taken. But in the long term, it, come, it will be beneficial to the monetary policy. But for the security policy, it will bring a, a, almost a solution to some of the security challenges that we have been having. Because when you look at banditry, you look at kidnapping, you look at terrorism, all these have been funded by 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 people and some of this money that fund terrorism are not in the banking space so definitely and cbn cannot be printing about three point something trillion three point seven trillion and you only have about one point something of that trillion in the banking space they will not be able to control inflation by using one of the two which is to reduce to, to reduce liquidity in the system so if they don't come up with this policy it will certainly affect them in the long term and especially now that we are dealing with inflations in double digit inflation it's not just only of that dealing with this inflation global inflation and trade so all cbn are doing every monetary policies decisions they are looking at the physical side and complementing the monetary side but you know in our side now there's no physical side so the cbn have to act out of their own jurisdiction into the physical side so definitely in the short term you've seen those repercussions in the parallel market the exchange rate has gone as high as 800 definitely you see that because now those people that keep those money at home will not want to take it to the bank because some of this money are not uh, uh, the other money that comes from terrorism kidnapping or money that are result of corruption so they want to take it to the blue the change so what we see now a lot of naira pushing few dollars and so what will happen the exchange rate they will go up because demand and supply comes to play so definitely in the short term it will look like that but in the long term i can assure you that if we've done everything we need to do, and that is in, 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 in getting the security agency, the EFCC, then we might see a solution to some of our exchange rate volatility. All right. Um, you've talked about the, the economic implications of this uh, as far as uh, macroeconomic, or ma yeah, macroeconomic policy is concerned. Um, uh, we look at the effect of the man on the street, especially the man in the rural area, and the effect on his own economy. We look at the microeconomy. Uh, Islamic cleric Sheikh Gumi has said that people in the villages and the rural areas will bear the brunt of this move. He's one of the many people who have reacted to that. We'll take some of their reactions. But let's start with him. He put up a post on his Facebook page on Saturday um, saying that Nigerians living in rural areas will bear the brunt of the move and he's slamming the federal government uh, over the move to redesign the Naira. You know, he says that, quote, changing the Naira, this is no time for economic kamikaze, is what he calls it. No matter how ingenious the hatches may romanticize, he says the benefits will remain phantom uh, since the reality on the ground is incongruous and it spells doom for the escapade. He says, quote, 80 percent of Nigerians, especially rural people, depend on cash transactions. A sudden change to a cashless or cash starved society will mean uh, pauperizing them. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on this and the effect on the, the rural dwellers and the average Nigerian who is struggling to eke out living in hard economic times? 
Well, that is where they have the money agents. You remember that the CBM have, um, have, have, have licensed a lot of money agents that are able to do transactions in the ton of $3 million. Yeah, I mean, so definitely they have the money agents. So CBN have acted on that already. And also we have the PO terminals all over uh, um, all the rural area. They are also money agents. So I and I mean we have it, um, uh, we also have uh, uh, ATM machines even located in the rural area. But when you come to the exchange, definitely they may have to come with the P they have to go through their POS agent and the money agent. And I know that the CBN is already doing something about that. We know that the rural area um, does their transaction by cash. Definitely, um, I, I won't doubt that from what he said, about 80% of them. But of this, of recent, you realize that most of them have been patronizing the POS agents than, the, than doing their cash transaction because it's becoming more risky security-wise for them to move from cash from, with cash from point A to B, especially with the recent security challenges that they, are, they, are, they have been experiencing. So definitely... Uh, in the short term, like I said, it could look like his policy, but I don't think I agree totally with um, um, Gumi because again, he's he, he, he's just looking at um, the the shorter the shorter side of it, the short term um, challenges. Every decision, economic decision, comes with its own short term challenges, and so definitely, I know that the CBN will work on way to get the um, the rural uh, people to begin to and uh, uh, not suffer so much. Knowing that this decision is not that you say you will not have cash in your hand. It says that you have to exchange what you have to what I mean to the new currency note. And how many people in that rural area always deal with one thousand or five hundred or two hundred? Most of them are dealing the low denomination of a hundred and fifty. So I, I, I don't get why he's saying that because um, again he, he more or less saying things that makes you feel that um, is it part of the conspiracy theory to make sure that terrorism and kidnapping and um, keeps keep keep keeps keeps striving? Because you are looking at it, and he's been an ex-military man. Should have looked at the security uh, implication of this. All right, so but uh, you have talked about you know short-term implication and long-term. Let's begin to talk about it. It's the decision of the CBN at this time to redesign the, the currency. You have said that, I mean, it's better late than never. It's something that they have to do uh, if they have to, you know, control the money that's in circulation. So quickly, w what would you say would be or what should Nigerians look out for in terms of, you know, uh, the negative implication and maybe the positive implication? The negative implication, like I said, we're already feeling it. We're going to see exchange rates, and um, like I said, it's for the short term because a lot of these people that have stolen this money are keeping this money in their houses. And also, we mustn't forget that also this also would also help us also in fighting vote buying come 2023 election. We are not looking at that yet. So, the, but in the short term, like I said, you saw the price. I mean, the exchange rate has gone up. That will automatically mean that the price of goods and services will go up. We see that in the inflation uh, figure that will roll out very soon by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. That is what we will see in the in the in the short term. But in the long term, we will see whereby those people that have collected this money either keep this cash in their homes, those people that are involved in a lot of corrupt tendencies, they will, at the end of the day, if we don't take this money to the banks, that means they are also we are going to, 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 to lose, lose the value of this money. They may not be able to have this money again. And those are the money that are bringing volatility in the exchange rate because most of the money that are bringing the exchange rate volatility are not in the banking space. They are in the hands of individuals. And most of these individuals are corrupt individuals. So definitely, you will see that play out. So in the long term, we might just begin to see the exchange rate comes down. It might not be drastically, but we see the exchange rate come down. We begin to get a lot of dollar pushing fuel of Naira, and then the law of demand and supply will come into play. And then security-wise, we might see, even, even if we, are, we give it to a security agent, that they have been doing a good job in regard of turning the the, the, the the bandit and the terrorists and the kidnappers. We could see a reduction in that, especially in the demand of ransom. Even if Gumi said that they will be beginning to demand ransom in dollars. And it's not easy to get dollars anywhere when you demand ransom in dollars. So definitely, I think um, it will, it, 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 
that will be the long-term benefit. Um, and then inflation, CBN will be able to use their monetary policy too, which is reduction in terms of reducing the, the liquidity in the system to control inflation. That is part of their tool. So I, I think in the short term, like I said, that challenge, those challenges will come in. You may get the banking hall being crowded with a lot of people trying to change. There will be hip hop on that. I am not even so confident that the CBN will meet the January 30th date. If you look at the Nigerian factor, unless they are so determined to do that, because the Nigerian factor is after some time you see people craving for extension through their legislators, through the, the various uh, organs of government. But I, I believe and I strongly think the CBN should to keep to their, to their decision that will help the economy. But if by chance they decide to change or bow to pressure to extend this, this decision, it might weaken the Naira and it might weaken the economy in the long term and even in the short term. But um, why, why do we have, I mean, you, you, you talked about the fact that there will be uh, demand for the dollar, especially when you have kidnappers asking that, uh, are we not you know, already suggesting this idea to them uh, on how you know, ah. to do this? <laughs> that, that's the question. Hey. The official currency for us is the Naira. So, um, you see, you see, you see. Unfortunately, that's why I'm saying that I don't expect somebody that is so close to the kidnappers, or somebody that is so close to the bandit, or somebody that is so close to the terror, the terrorists. He has been one of their negotiator. He has been the one that have gone to meet them in the forest to be making such statement that said they will start demanding in dollars. So definitely, you see, he's the one telling them now. If I was the security agent, I mean, he's the one telling them now. You need to start demanding ransom in dollars. <laughs> that's a, you know how our economies have been dollarized. That's the challenge. We look even look at what we put in on is all foreign. So we have dollarized our economy these days. You see banks, you see investment group asking people to begin to invest in dollar dominated investment because that's the way to age against inflation. And the funny thing is that you cannot even age against inflation by. I mean, by 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 uh, um, investing in dollar. At the end of the day, what gives value for your money is when you change it back to naira, not even when you keep it to dollar. Because when you leave it in the dollar, inflation in in in, in, in the most developed economy in the world, which is America, is about 10%. So if you are not earning up to 10% of that money, then that money is losing value. So the only time they get value for that money is to change it back to the naira. And I think the CBN are aware of that. So any of them that have this currency in dollars will not be able to travel with it in dollars. They will still have to come back and change it to Naira. So definitely that is where the value comes. So it's going to be a win-win situation for the CBN in the long term. But we have dollarized our economy. We say the dollar is the most, which is the most, it is the most powerful, dollar is the most powerful currency in the world. But in a, when we are dealing with con consumables, we need to begin to put value in the currency and which is supposed to be the Naira. Even the CBN, even some 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 establishment, sometimes when people apply for even visa to go out of the shore of this country, some of these uh, 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 visa agents are now asking people to pay in dollar. So those are part of the things that the CBN also need to begin to address. Why do you ask us to pay in dollar when we are in when we are when the major currency is naira? So those are part of the loophole that I think the CBN will have to look at and begin to see what they can do about it. But I, I can tell you for the short term, it's looking good. You may see those gas exchange rate goes up, but don't worry. It's just uh, what they will see. And uh, sometimes they will see uh, corruption is fighting back. Definitely, that's what we will see in the short term. But like I said, it all depends on how the CBN goes about it, how prepared they are to meet the demand. Remember, the CBN is already saying that we will want a cashless society. So some people, my, especially in the urban area, you will exchange that, you will go to the bank, you put in that 500, they will credit it electronically for you. You will not get back the new note unless you want to do a transaction. Then you have to go to key for the new note. And remember that the CBN now wants to reduce cash in the system. So most of our transactions may be done electronically. And that is why they are planning to improve, they, they say they will improve the, 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 the app of, um, uh, of, 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 of their, uh, every bank need to improve their app also to make sure that things goes on uh, uh, very well. Another um, aspect of this, uh, uh, before we go, I wish we had more time to talk about the, the, non the monetization and how it works. Uh, but another aspect of this happens to be the, uh, the inscriptions on the Naira notes, uh, quite controversial, you would agree. 
Um, Ajami is said to be what's seen scrapped apart from the Naira, the, um, the house of variation of the Arabic writing, uh, which has been in use in northern Nigeria since the 17th century. Some have called for it to be removed from the newly designed Naira notes, not to be included, rather, in the newly desired, uh, designed Naira notes. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Is this a, a religious issue? Is it a cultural issue? What's the etymology or the, the, the genesis of this? How did this find its way there? Um, is there any issue here at all? Some people say this is simply an issue of inclusivity, uh, trying to ensure that uh, the, the writing and the language, um, you know, it had use, in use in northern Nigeria at the time the Naira was created just to help people understand and know what is 500 Naira, what is 1,000 Naira, what is 200 Naira in their language, um, that this is going to help. So should this be an issue at all, this Ajami Arabic inscriptions on the Naira? It shouldn't be an issue. Let me give you an, um, give you an example. The most developed country now in the world is America. And they put in their currency saying, God we trust. And then in, in, their, in their schools, they are not even allowed to talk about God. They say God is an individual thing. But in their major means of exchange, which they use all over, they put in God we trust. So I don't think that, that not, that's not what brings the, the value of the Naira. It's not in the name you put in it. It's not in the, in, 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 in the, in the how you put it, whether Arabic, English, no. The value of the Naira has to deal with what you are able to produce, what amount, how, value, how valuable is your Naira in, in terms of your monetary policy decision, in terms of your physical decision. That's what gives the Naira value, not in the currency name, whether I write it in Arabic, whether I write it in Greek, whether I write it in Hebrew, whether I write it in Jewish language. It doesn't change anything. It's, it's a means of exchange. It's like no matter how dirty the Naira is, if you pick it, it still gives you the same value. It's only in Nigeria that I see people just look at the Naira and say, no, I won't, I won't collect it because it's dirty. Because that is why another reason the CBN was given for that is that look, we need to guide against counterfeiting. We need to guide against uh, 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 making the Naira look neat. I, I am not, that is the problem of the CBN about counterfeiting. The economy, the security has improved in every currency. Now, but you must understand also, global best practices is that every five to eight years, you redesign your currency. So I don't think this issue of Arabic or not Arabic coming into it. So it's are you saying, I, I, are you ago. saying, Muktag, are you saying that we should actually, Nigerians should actually ignore that, especially when we know that uh, the issue of tribe, the issue of ethnicity seem to be big for us, right? Uh, we're an English-speaking nation. What business do we have with Arab being on the note? Uh, if we're talking about Arab, which some people would say represent a certain religion, should we begin to have, you know, all of the languages reflected on the note? So what are you really saying? We know that we cannot ignore the issue of ethnicity and religion out of our development as a nation. We, 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 will not, we, we should not ignore it. Then also we should not forget that those small population that also have a right to their own this um, in the currency. When I talk about the Arabic, you should know that the Arabic language is also still being being, being, being used as means of communication in some part of Nigeria. So I don't think we should. I, we, you see, let me tell you something about it. When the politicians want to get things out of Nigeria, they they bring us to religion, they bring us to tribalistic. They, I mean, they bring tribal into it, they bring religions into it. They bring ethnicity into it. That's when they want to divide us. But when it comes to the common good of them it corrupting, enriching themselves with our common wealth, none of them look at whether they are Muslim, whether they are Christian, whether they are Hindus, whether they are they are they are uh, they are they are, they are different tribes. You can look corruption does not have a tribal name, does not have a religious name. Every every of them practice corruption. They they are involved in corrupt practices. So I don't think it should be a major issue in in the fact that since the since the the the, the, the the printing of our currency, we've always had that. And that has not reduced the value, or that has what has added the value. I just give an example of America that they put in God we trust. And not everybody in America believe that. Even in their public schools, is you are not even allowed to come up publicly to talk anything about God. But in their currency, which is a medium of exchange, they put their in God we trust. So definitely, I don't think that should be an issue. Economically, when you are looking at a currency, you are not looking at, at the the way what is used, you're looking at what is the value of that currency. What is the value? What can that currency purchase? The purchasing power of that currency does not come by the Arabic or by the English. It comes basically by, by the monetary policy and the physical policy. That is what gives value to that currency. And that is what we should, we should be thinking of. We shouldn't be bringing religions and tribalism 
into our economy. That does not help our economy. That will not help our economy going forward. That is where I stand. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mokhtar, for your time. We appreciate you, um, you know, emphasizing uh, the point. Uh, Mokhtar Mohammed is a, a development economist and he's joined us uh, live on our first discussion right here on The Breakfast. Mokhtar, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. All right. You have a pleasant day. Thank you. All right, we'll take a break now, and where we come back, we have more discussions ahead on The Breakfast. Please stay with us.